You know, people generally misunderstand hope. Hope is a word that we throw around in all kinds of ways. Sometimes we use the word hope to communicate、uh, wishful thinking. You know, as a lifelong Detroit Lions fan, I have said many times, I hope the Lions win a playoff game this year. Heck, I hope the Lions win a game. <laughs> And I am sure you have heard or even used the word hope in this way when you really, really want something to happen. But there just aren't guarantees there. And that type of hope can so easily be swept away. Trust me, no matter how many times and how hard I hope the Lions make it to the playoffs, my hopes are consistently crushed. Some people hold the concept of hope up with. A kind of blind optimism. And the new year is a time where we really see that. We all make lofty goals and New Year's resolutions. And I'm going to get that new car or that new job. I'm going to find that special someone.、And、we put our hope in those things, all while ignoring the reality of what is really going on around us. But I think that this year, especially, has taught us that this type of hope. Is not secure. Think back to January of 2020. What were you putting your hope in for the year? Can you even remember at this point? See, for most people, hope involves something you do. Parker Palmer calls that functional atheism, and he defines it this way the belief that ultimate responsibility for everything rests with us. This is the unconscious, unexamined conviction that if anything decent is going to happen here, we are the ones who must make it happen. A conviction held even by people who talk a good game about God. But as we are going to discover today, hope actually isn't dependent on a circumstance or an action, but is rather something you can have, you can possess, you can own, you can grab onto and hold onto. Starting right now and forever, and it will change your life and carry you through anything that comes your way. Even 2020 can't kill this real hope.